Welcome back to the High School Sports Zone. I'm Todd Freed. See you Sunday nights at 9 and Mondays at 8 on Channel 57. Plus, we're on throughout the week on 8CC TV. And if you're watching this week's special Thursday night rebroadcast on the Cube, then stay tuned right afterwards for live high school football between Madison and the Pearland Oilers. All right, in the District 13 5A football race, this figures to be a vastly improved season for the Klein Forest Golden Eagles, and for very good reason, the much anticipated return of quarterback Matt Davis. <laughs> On the first day of football practice, Klein Forest quarterback Matt Davis had an extra spring in his staff. After missing virtually all of last season with a devastating knee injury, Davis is back and better than ever. It was great. It's a blessing, you know, missing the whole season last year, coming out here with my team. You know, I'm so excited. I'm ready to go out here and play. One of the state's top quarterback prospects entering his junior season, Davis went down in the first half of the first game with a torn ACL in his right knee. But his hard work, dedication, and faith have played a critical role in a remarkable comeback. Well, first of all, you know, it took, took a lot of prayer. A lot of prayer, you know, staying rooted in God, staying faithful. You know, I had, a, I had a great support team. You know, my parents, you know, my, my team here, my coaches, you know, they did a great job of just staying behind me my family. So, you know, it, 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 was, it was easier than, you know, what it, what it could have been, you know, with them have, with having a great support team. So, you know, I'm thankful for that. When Davis went down last season, the season came spiraling down as well for the Golden Eagles. The return of their senior leader should undoubtedly turn things around this fall. There's no doubt he's one of the best athletes, if not the best athlete I've ever coached. But other than, besides that, he's a great leader. And uh, he brings leadership back to, the, to our team. And uh, that just carries over into everything he does and everything the team does. So A prize recruit of the Texas Aggies, Davis will enroll at A&M for the upcoming spring semester. And with a lofty 1460 score on his SAT, he certainly has the smarts to do so. Before that, there's some important business to take care of here at Klein Forest. Let's win today. Hey. Let's get it. Let's get it. Hey. Go ahead on three. Go ahead on three. One, two, three. Run. Let's go. Let's go. I'm, I'm looking for undefeated season. That's definitely our goal. You know, we would come out here starting today, work hard on these drills, you know, everything from, you know, play by play to conditioning. Just work hard, get better and better, and, you know, look, look for a state championship. That's our main goal. All right, for more on Klein Forest and that strong district, let's welcome back Jenny Dial and Matt Malatesta. How good is District 13 5A, Jenny? Too good, too good. I wish we could <laughs> spread some of those teams out because there's a, a handful of teams in that district that won't make the playoffs that would win districts mm -hmm. elsewhere. And, uh, but that makes that district the most entertaining year after year after year. It's a great district. What does the return of Matt Davis mean to the Golden Eagles? Well, I'll tell you what, they go from two and eight to I think they're going to sneak in and get the fourth playoff spot. But I tell you what, you're right. There's so many great teams in that district. I have Vipe has DeCaney with Trey Williams not making the playoffs this year. Klein, who is tremendously coached by Shane Hallmark, not making the playoffs, as well as Tom Ball, who had a breakout season last year. They lost a lot of seniors. We don't have them making the playoffs. It's just it's the SEC of the state of Texas. What about Klein College? Is it back-to-back -back undefeated seasons? Yes, it is, and they're, they're regular seasons. But that's incredible, especially with that schedule. Absolutely. But, but the thing about that is if for them, for Klein Collins and, and knowing them over there, it's not enough to go 10-0 and 0 when you, you know, end up 11-2 and 2 at the, or 11-1 and 1 at the end of the year. You know, they, they'd rather lose a couple of games in that district and, and win a few more playoff games. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. I think they're a clear favorite again in that district, though. So they should lose game eight so they can win game 12. Is that right? Whatever it takes. <laughs> I know that's what those guys want. And they're capable of winning every game they play. So what about Klein Collins? Gosh, they do it year in and year out. They do. They're tremendous. They're well coached, well disciplined. But don't sleep on Klein Oak. I love Nikki Brody, the quarterback there. They beat the Woodlands in the first round of the playoffs. Watch out for them. They could go a couple rounds deep. As well as Westfield, man. They're back. <laughs> They've got a very, very good defensive lineman um, that's heading to Texas Tech. So watch out for Westfield as well. Make it a resurgent. Get back in the playoffs. What a district. Check out your picks real quick. And this is a tough one, but the consensus for both of you guys is Klein Collins. Then Jenny and the Chronicle have Klein Oak, Klein and Westfield. Vipe is going with Klein Oak, Klein Forest and Westfield. And time will tell. All right. 
From Klein, let's head south, way south to Missouri City, where in the District 23 5A football race, the Elkins Knights look to be right in the mix of the district championship race. Jog back, let's go, let's go, get there. Next group, get ready. Go! I'm very excited. I think that uh, we have a good group of guys who work hard and been playing together for the last uh, two or three years. Uh, we have a couple guys who've been on the bars since their freshman year. So we're very excited. And there's plenty of good reason for first year head coach Dennis Brantley to be excited about his Elkins Knights. Excitement that includes the return of three year starting quarterback Jake Burkhalter, who threw for over 2,200 yards and 20 touchdowns last season. Jake uh, Burkhalter is a three year starter, and, uh, uh, you know, he's basically he's, he's a coach out there. You know, he's seen everything. Uh, uh, you know, we think alike, so uh, it, it makes it very easy for the transition for me. Burkhalder will have no shortage of targets at his disposal, including one of the area's top wideouts in six foot three, Chance Allen. Coach Bradley, a uh, um, great coach. He's coming in with a new fast tempo offense, mostly spread, keeping the same, but we got a lot of different looks and a lot of plays to catch up on. But mostly a fast tempo offense, a hurry up offense. Um, I say I probably compare our offense to Oregon, probably, mostly, but we, we're getting down as soon as the whistle blows to go on to the next play. Here it is, green, green, hit, boom! That's my first step. On the offensive line, the tradition continues with Mike Matthews becoming the fourth of the Matthews brothers to suit up at Elkins. Like his older brothers Kevin and Jake, the son of former NFL great Bruce Matthews, will play his college ball at Texas A&M. We've been blessed by God. It's just, I mean, everybody just it's, just, it's almost like we were born to play the game. It's just, everyone's really good at it. And I mean, we go out there and we do our thing. Just, we're born to do it. Defensively, the Knights boast another future Texas Aggie and highly touted defensive back, Corey Thompson. I feel really good about my team. Uh, I've been going with these guys since freshman year, and we, we won district our freshman year. We've been going ever since. Uh, freshman year all the way up to now, and uh, got a lot of those guys on varsity. So I feel really good about my team. A team that figures to be a serious contender in the District 23 5A football race. So, Elkins, pretty good team to watch out for. What about this district? Ten teams, and it's a scramble. What do you think about District 23 5A out in Fort Bend? It's a, that's a good district this year. It, it was a pretty good district last year, too, but it was top-heavy. I mean, your, your top teams were a lot better than your bottom teams. I think that's evened out a little bit this year. I'm, I'm riding with Hightower. I'm, if Braylon Addison is on the team, I'm picking them to win. He's just, he just, just does too many things to not... Uh, to not pick Hightower to win that district. All right, let's check out the picks, and it's a consensus all the mo almost all the way through. Hightower, then Elkins, Travis, and then uh, we've got a little difference of opinion between Marshall and Dulles. Is that right? That's, That's right. right. Okay. All right, we'll find out more in a minute. When we come back, it's the end of an era at Madison. We'll visit with the Marlins' new first-year head coach. Then it's off to Cy Falls and Cinco Ranch for much more on the countdown to kickoff.